are you doing today, YouTube? Deeski from Deeski Grills, back with another cooking video. And today, we'll be cooking beef rib roast bone-in. Uh, this roast is about a 13-pound roast that uh, I generally do around the holidays. It is a more higher-end piece of meat. But let me tell you, nothing better than a rib roast. And you know a rib roast is no more than the ribeye part of the meat that's put in roast form. My butcher was awesome, and he tied it up for me and got it ready for me to prepare today. So I want to show you a few of the ingredients we'll be using. This will be a, a quick cook. It may take a little while because I'll be cooking it low. It's 13 pounds. But as far as the prepping of it, that's going to be the easy part. We'll be using some kosher salt, as you can see, some crushed black pepper, three different herbs. I'm planning on using the rosemary, planning on using what's providence. Providence is no more than three or four different herbs all mixed together. So we'll be using that as well. And last but not least, we'll be using some basil. I always talk to you guys about binders, and the binder uh, will be the olive oil. So the olive oil will go to the meat. All of these seasonings will go on top of the olive oil, which will make it stick to the meat. We've already had this beautiful piece of meat resting on the cutting board for a couple of hours to get up to room temperature. So the exciting thing is going to be showing you the grill, the setup, the rotisserie cooker if you haven't seen it, and I'll try to get some more information. I bought that about three years ago, and I'll try to get more information if you like it or send any comments on it. So as always, thank you for joining me on These Keys Grills, and let's get cooking. Okay, YouTube, let's wash the roast. So as you can see, I am opening up this beautiful rib roast. Uh, this rib roast, as you can see, is nice and fresh. It is, again, like I told you, 13 pounds. Look at the awesome uh, fat that's on the top side of it. That fat is going to render down during the cook. And of course, just add flavor to this roast. So all I'm doing now is washing uh, all sides really well. You can see also, this is a five bone roast. So it's hearty. It's going to be plenty for everybody and then some. So, hey, this is the washing part. Next, we will start seasoning. Okay, YouTube, let's season the roast. As you can see, I'm adding olive oil to both sides as a binder. Next thing we'll do is add a generous portion of kosher salt. So the kosher salt definitely will soak in during the cook. You wanna add plenty of that. Now we're adding plenty of black pepper to both sides. And another thing, so you can't put enough seasoning because it's all gonna soak in. Remember, this is a 13 pound roast. So what you see me doing now is adding our three different herbs generously on each side as well. So that process I will do on both sides, then I will stand it up on both sides and do the exact same thing. So as much seasoning as possible to make sure it gets down and into that roast. So that's what you see me doing. Next step, we will be plugging this roast with garlic and that'll be a, a pretty awesome thing to see. Okay, YouTube, time to plug it with garlic. So as you can see, I've taken fresh garlic and I'm peeling it and all I'm doing is poking holes into the roast and plugging it or filling it with whole pieces of garlic throughout the entire roast. Again, this is a layer of flavor that throughout the cook, the garlic will soften and it will continue to add more flavor to this wonderful rib roast. Okay, YouTube, let's get this roast on the rotisserie. Now this um, spit that I have, I bought for my 22 and a half inch kettle about three years ago. I'll make it a point to put a link in the description on where I bought this. But all I'm doing now is trying to get this in the right spot so it can turn for about three and a half hours on the grill. We'll go to the grill next and check out my setup. Okay, YouTube, here's the grill setup for today. So what you'll see uh, in the middle is our foil tray that will catch all the drippings from the roast. Those are our char baskets. We'll keep our char charcoals in both sides of those. So we'll continue to fill those char baskets throughout this three and a half hour cook. And all the drippings, again, from the roast will go into the tray along with this awesome gravy mixture that I'm going to show you how to make next. Let's head back into the kitchen. Okay, YouTube, time to prep the gravy mixture. So what we'll be using for this gravy today will be red potatoes, baby carrots, onion, celery, mushrooms, and red wine. This is a red cooking wine that we'll add as well. So all I'm doing now is quartering the, uh, I'll quarter the potatoes. We will just throw in our carrots. We will cut up our celery and our onion. Then we'll also add not only the red wine and mushrooms, but we'll add a gravy mixture and that'll be warm water 
and flour that I stir up and pour in. This will thicken during the cook and make an awesome gravy. Okay, YouTube, it's time to get cooking. So what you see me doing now is lighting my fire cube. Um, I'm going to do that on both sides. So we're going to uh, let the uh, coals ash over, of course. You see we have the gravy mixture in the middle, so it is just waiting for the roast to sit on top of it and start putting in some of those awesome drippings so our sauce can, uh, or our gravy, can thicken up and just be delicious. So what we're going to do after this is get the lid closed um, after these things ash over and let it get up the temperature. We'll be shooting for a target temperature of about 325 degrees. Uh, when it gets to that temperature, we'll go ahead and throw our roast on and let you see this rotisserie start spinning. Again, this will be an easy cook. The prep is the hardest part of it. Okay, YouTube, our grill has reached the desired temperature of 325 degrees. So what we're going to do now is get our spit into place, put it into the uh, motor, which makes the uh, roast spin. And now you will see the roast start turning. There it is. That baby is spinning. It'll start dripping wonderful juices into our gravy on the bottom. And again, this is done now. You can see how beautiful this roast is. And throughout this process, you'll watch it start browning up. So I'm really excited about it. Um, this roast will be awesome. You can see the big plug holes in it. I'm going to put the lid back on. And the next time you see me, we'll be in about an hour when we are checking on this roast again. So see you in about an hour. Okay, YouTube, we are one hour into the cook, and let's see how this roast is coming along. Wow, look at that. It is browning up awesomely, as you can see. This roast is going to be really, really good. Uh, we do have about two hours to go. I did want to check in with you and let you see how it's going, but it's pretty easy, and it's taking care of itself. So we'll check back in, see how we're doing again in the next hour. Okay, you two, we are two hours into the cook. Let's see how this roast is looking. Wow, it is coming along great. Look how awesome it's browning up right now. So one good thing with this rotisserie that makes it such an awesome tool for low and slow type cooking uh, is the fact that with it rotating like that, it just self-bases the meat. So you get all the tenderization just from it spinning like that. Now also the drippings, they go into our gravy to give it that awesome roast flavor. And look how tender it is. We're going to close it up and check back in with each other again in hour three. YouTube, it's three hours into the cook and wow, look at this rib roast. Okay, we're going to check out the gravy next. Let's check out the gravy. Look down there. This gravy is coming along. It's all about the mixture of the uh, red wine and everything else that we put in. Our carrots, our gravy that was made again with water and uh, flour. Now as you see the drippings, they're just going in making this special. We'll check back again in a minute. Okay YouTube, let's check out our internal temperatures. If you can see, I'm over now turning the motor off on the rotisserie and now we're going to go ahead and stick our Thermal Pro in and see how this roast is coming along. So when cooking this roast, uh, at least this particular roast today, we are shooting for a target temperature of 175 degrees. That is medium well to well done. That's the way my family likes their roast. So that's what we're shooting for. As you can see, we're around 160, 159 degrees. So we got at least about 15 more minutes to go. So what I'm planning on doing now is just putting the lid back on, checking back with you guys in about 15 minutes. Okay, YouTube, it's been about 15 minutes. Let's see if it's done yet. We're going to grab the probe now and uh, start probing the areas and seeing what we got going on. So right now, in the middle of the roast, as you can see, she is pretty close to where we want it to be. Look at that. It's moving up fast. And we are right at about 175 degrees. I'll go ahead now and uh, probe it in another spot and make sure you can see the temperature um, so you can see that it's made it to what we're looking for. Again, about 175 degrees. So it'll start coming down and you'll see we are right at 176, 170 degrees. Let's take it inside to the cutting board and check out our final product. The big thumbs up. Okay, YouTube, let's check out our finished results. I'm removing the spit right now. And as you can see how tender it was, it slid right out like butter. 
So I'm going to move this to the side and then we'll put our potatoes next to it. Give them a stir. They are going to be awesome. What a cool compliment to go to this wonderful roast. Okay, so what we're going to do next, I want you to check out the roast and look at the drippings coming off of this roast. This thing is so full of flavor and so tender inside. It is unreal. Um, I'm going to stir the potatoes up now. I want you to see I'm going to push so you can see that they are soft. Great job. Last but not least, we're going to cut this roast up. Pay close attention when I push down on the roast with the knife so you can see how juicy and tender this thing is internally. So, nothing else to do now but just cut it up, add it to the gravy, and it's time to serve the family. As always, I want to thank you for joining me here at These Key Grills. If you like what we're doing, please subscribe to my channel. And as always, at These Key Grills, grilling is not a pastime, it's a passion. You enjoy the rest of your day, YouTube. Thanks as always for joining me. I'm going to dunk some of this stuff in and enjoy it.